All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use an initializer and also how to perform a binding in FXML. Now, binding in FXML is a little bit different than how we learned it before, but you guys are going to catch on real quick. And before we get started, I'm just going to delete everything from the last tutorial. So all of this button stuff. So we pretty much have an empty controller. And we can actually just delete this entire button right here since we don't really need it. All right. So what is an initializer? An initializer is for whenever you want to run code right after your view loads. So the program starts, this view loads right here, and you want to run some code behind the scenes, maybe load in some user data from a database, or if they have like any save files, you can load those in, whatever. So in order to do that, we actually need to implement and right here initializable so it's saying okay you have a little error right here because whenever you use initializable you actually need to implement this one method called initialize so basically this is the method that's going to be called as soon let me tighten this up as soon as this view loads so if we just do something like system out print line I'll just say um like loading user data. So now let's just go ahead and run this and check it out. So the view loads right like that and without having to call any methods manually it called initialize. So there you go simple enough that was easy to understand now let's go ahead and learn about binding. Now we already know what binding is. We can essentially tie a property of one object to a property of another. So I'll just show you guys a real quick example. Say that we wanted to tie the text of this label to this one right here. Why would we want to do that? I'm not sure, but that's what I'm going to do in this tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is for the source, we need to give it an ID so we can reference it. So FX ID, I'm just going to name this like a first label. All right, simple enough. And let me not even include any text in here because instead, whenever we want to bind, we first use the dollar sign. Now, whenever you see a dollar sign, it pretty much means a reference to something else. So if we use dollar sign, curly brackets, and then we type Oh, it's not going to autofill for me. Well, I'll just copy it then. First label dot text. What we're saying is we are going to grab the value of first label text. So whatever was written in this label, whatever text is on this label, and we're going to bind it to this property right here. So now these are actually bound together. Whenever the text changes on this, it will automatically get updated on the second label. So let me run that. And there you go. And since I have a little bit of time left, what I can do now is show you guys how to use reusable objects. So let me get rid of this and then I'll explain what they are. So let's say that we're making some kind of program. We'll say that it's a game and we're going to have a radio group. In other words, we're going to have a little option menu with three radio buttons and the user can select a difficulty for their game. Easy, medium, or hard. Now we already learned whenever we're looking at how to make menus that whenever you make a radio group you put them as part of the same toggle group that's how your program knows that these three options are grouped together in the same toggle group so let me just change this to like a uh, difficulty all right so remember for each radio button you set it part of the same toggle group so you're going to need to use that toggle group over and over and over again well, anytime you want to use an object over and over and over again, you actually need to define it as a reusable object. So if you just write FX define, and then you close this, then in between here, you write any objects that are going to be reusable through your code. So I know that this is toggle group. And of course, we just need to give it an ID so we can reference it. So I'll just call it something like I don't know, toggle group or like a difficulty, whatever. And since this is a single tag, we can actually just end it 
like that. And now we can just start making our radio buttons. So radio button, the first attribute I just want to set is the text on it. And I'll just say like a uh, easy. And then the second one is toggle group. And we need to reference this. So remember, anytime we want to reference something, we use the dollar sign. And then the name of whatever we want to reference. And this is a single tag. So end it like that. So again, your toggle group, it isn't a parent of these radio buttons. It's actually an attribute. So instead of having to, you know, write it over and over again, we just make it a reusable object. And then if I change the text, like medium and hard, then there you go. And we can make a button to submit that if we want, but too lazy. All right. So let me run this and check it out. So now since these are grouped together, notice that we can only select one of them. And of course we could do something like print it out on the screen or actually use it in our program, but there you go. So again, anytime that you wanna create an object that you're gonna reuse in your code, put it in between these FX defined brackets and you can just write each reusable object on a new line and simple as that.